I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the highest in elevation state capital in the United States is Santa Fe, New Mexico. Did I get that right, Keith? That is correct. 7,000 feet. Oh, hey, we got the number in. I love that. Well, Keith Toller is here. He's the, well, he's a very important person at the Official Tourism Bureau. Is that correct? I'm the executive director of the Santa Fe Convention and Visitors Bureau. Well, that means you sign the checks. At that the end of the I day, the you gotta make you got to make sure everything works. What do people not know about Santa Fe? Well, I think a lot of people don't know about the elevation. That was a good point that you brought up. Uh, they think that we are, you know, low desert, and we are very much high desert yeah. destination. We have peaks that run to 12,000, 12,700 feet uh, right around the city. Yeah. Um, I think that people don't understand that Santa Fe is the oldest capital city in the country. It's 400 years old. I did, now that I didn't know, but the design in the city itself, help me out just a little bit about the, the, the design because it's, it's basically very specifically designed around a central plaza. That's correct. The uh, Santa Fe Plaza was the first place that uh, the Spanish settled. Uh, there was the uh, Palace of the Governors, which is the oldest continuously occupied uh, public building in the country. I love the factoids. Back in the 1600s. Right. Um, and it was a Civil War, uh, it was part of the Civil War uh, encampment. Mm -hmm. And it was also, uh, it's currently the uh, New Mexico, part of the New Mexico History Museum. And on that very note, it's very hard to say, well, Santa Fe is like this city that you may have been to. That's because Santa Fe has a very very unique thumbprint. Santa Fe is unique to any city I've ever seen. Yeah. It's very, very different. All the adobe architecture that's there, um, the the fact that you have three cultures that have come together to create Santa Fe. You've got the Native American culture, the uh, Spanish culture, and the Anglo culture. And really with the Spanish culture, there's been a lot of Mexican influence as well. But it was really the Spanish culture that came over and settled uh, in, the, in the 1600s. And people always want to know what's new. Let's do that. What's new in Santa Fe? Well, Santa Fe is constantly evolving. Um, we're one of UNESCO's creative cities. Uh, we're one of the f we were the first United States city that was named a UNESCO Creative Cities um, uh, Network part of the city. And uh, so we're, what we're really focusing on is creative tourism. The idea of bringing visitors to Santa Fe, letting them work with our artists um, to do fiber arts, painting, photography, tin work, and actually have the hands-on experience. And we're really trying to, to integrate that whole concept of having the local artists work in their local medium with visitors coming in. So they have something to take home with them. Now, you've been there three years, I believe. You came from the east, which is nice, Bucks County. When, when you decided to take this job, did you get to the bottom of why in the world that town is so arts-friendly? You know, I think that uh, it's just people have been creating there for so many years. I mean, the Native Americans have been there for over a thousand years, and they've been creating their pots and their uh, and you know their tin work and all of that. So I think that it's um, you know that started it, and then you saw a lot of people come uh, to to Santa Fe from the east because it was so different. From the light there is incredible. If you haven't seen the light, so many people wanted to come and photograph. George O'Keefe moved there so she could paint the light, and I think that that really kind of makes Santa Fe unique. And I I believe Georgia, don't they have, a, there's an entire museum dedicated to her about it. Right? Yes, Georgia O'Keeffe has uh, a museum there, and in fact this summer they will be doing the uh, Georgia O'Keeffe's Abstraction Exhibition, which was created in part with the Whitney Museum here in New York. Okay, and on that note too, while we're at it, the New Mexico State Museum is also there, right? The New Mexico Museum for the Art is there. They're going to be doing all summer a uh, Western uh, exhibition that really focuses on the art of cowboy boots. I love that. Are you wearing boots right now? I am not wearing boots right now. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we were both wearing like bunny slippers? But we're not, so don't bother. All right, well, thank you, Keith, very much for this. Oh, it's great. Thanks for having me on the show. It's my pleasure. We will continue right after this.